Good evening, guys. Welcome to this board exam revision session in biology. Well, uh, as far as your board exams are concerned, I know they're just around the corner, just a couple of weeks away. So I'm sure you're all under a lot of stress. But for the next 15, 20 minutes, let's forget about all that and see how we can best make use of the time given to us. Okay, uh, so before starting off, I'd like to tell you what to expect of this session. Well, basically, as you know, uh, in your class 12 biology, there are 16 chapters which are grouped into five broad units, out of which the first unit is reproduction. And the unit reproduction includes four chapters, which are reproduction in organisms, sexual reproduction in flowering plants, human reproduction, and reproductive health. So today in this session, we'll be talking about certain aspects related to these four chapters. Okay, but before that, since today is our first biology session, I'd like to give you a general outline, a general idea about the layout of your question paper, maybe something that you already know, but then it's always useful to discuss this. Uh, so you'll be writing your theory paper for 70 marks, which will be divided into five sections, right? Section A, Section B, Section C, D and E. And what would these contain? Section A would include five questions of one mark each. Section B would contain five questions of two marks each, which we call short answer questions. Section C would include 12 questions of three marks each. Section D would include just one value-based question, which would carry four marks. And finally, section five would include three questions each carrying five marks each. So basically, section E would include your long answer questions, okay? So let's start off. According to the latest blueprint uh, by CBSE, the first unit which we are about to discuss today, uh, which is reproduction, has been given a weightage of about 14 marks, which means the four chapters that I've mentioned would together have questions worth 14 marks in your board exam, okay? So let's discuss this chapter-wise. Well, basically, I won't be discussing concepts today because we wouldn't have uh, time for that. I think it's more important for you to know how exactly to revise during your last few days of preparation. Okay, so post your comments and we'll get back to it towards the end of the session. Okay, the first chapter, reproduction in organisms. Well, as far as uh, the importance of this chapter is concerned, uh, it is a very important chapter in terms of forming a really good base for understanding the future, the, the remaining three chapters in this unit, okay? But then as far as weightage is concerned, usually this chapter tends to have not more than one to two monaceous, monaceous, parthenogenesis, and all those, okay? So make sure you remember all that and get them clear in your head. Then, coming to the next chapter, which is sexual reproduction in flowering plants, a hardcore botany chapter, and this is highly concept heavy and very, very important for your board exam. Um, well, but then to talk about an outline of the chapter, broadly, we could say that this chapter includes the pre-fertilization events, double fertilization and the post-fertilization events in flowering plants. So unfortunately, it's hard to give you pinpoint focus areas in this chapter because there is actually a lot and so far questions have been asked across all the concepts in this chapter. Even the minute details such as um, every stage in the formation of embryo sac in flowering plants. So you need to be familiar with all the minute details also in this chapter. Then another thing, as far as diagrams are concerned, you know that diagrams do form a very important part of a biology exam, right? Even then, many of us tend to not uh, give uh, enough importance to diagrams. But then, this chapter does have a long list of important diagrams, which you have no choice but to practice and remember them, okay? I'll just make an important, uh, a, a broad list of diagrams that you will need to know, okay? And this would include the structure of the pollen grain, the stamen, the megasporangium, the mature embryo sac, double fertilization or the section showing the growth of a pollen tube and also the structure of a typical seed, okay? These are just the most important diagrams in this chapter. Okay, going ahead, 
The third chapter in this unit, which is human reproduction. This is again a highly concept heavy chapter. And uh, broadly, this chapter includes the structures of the male and female reproductive systems. Then the detailed steps of gametogenesis, uh, which are spermatogenesis and oogenesis respectively. And then the menstrual cycle, the stages of pregnancy, uh, parturition and lactation okay so broadly these are the contents of the chapter again we do have a lot of important diagrams here which would include the structure of the male and female reproductive systems then the structure of the ovum the structure of the sperm and also um, the structure of the developmental stages which would include the stages from zygote to implantation which is the blastocyst okay so make sure you're familiar with all the diagrams that I've mentioned. Now, apart from all these, we also have concepts such as gametogenesis. There is spermatogenesis in males and oogenesis in females, right? So uh, gametogenesis, the menstrual cycle and the detailed steps of embryonic development. These three concepts are really, really important. And uh, in my opinion, the best way to study these would be uh, to make flow charts for them, whether you're studying it for the first time right now or whether you're already thorough with it and you're just revising it, I suggest you make flow charts of these gametogenesis, menstrual cycle and embryonic development because it will definitely come in as a very, very handy tool during your final stages of revision. Okay, so that's about the chapter human reproduction. Coming to our last chapter, which is reproductive health. Uh, this just includes the methods of contraception, the various sexually transmitted diseases or STDs, and also uh, the methods of treatment of infertility, which we call ARTs or assisted reproductive technologies. Um, another important point that I need to make here is that reproductive health is actually a chapter which has a lot of scope to be asking you the value-based question in section D of your paper, okay? So that can give you uh, four marks quite easily, not just this chapter, there are a lot of other topics also in your 12th biology, but then among these four that we are discussing today, reproductive health does have a lot of scope for value-based questions. So uh, the best way to learn this chapter would be to make two different tables, okay? One for uh, the various methods of contraception and the other one for the various assisted reproductive technologies. So under the respective tables, you would list out every aspect of all that you need to know because again, in your last minute revision, these will come in as very, very handy tools just for a quick glance because ignoring this part would actually be a very bad idea because they can fetch you a lot of marks quite easily, okay? So make sure you learn all of these. All right, so to summarize what I've told you, uh, we have four chapters under the chapter, under the unit, reproduction, in which the first chapter, reproduction in organisms, you need to remember all the examples and the important terminology, okay? In the second and third chapters, which are plant reproduction and human reproduction. Make sure you learn the diagrams thoroughly well and also keep revising all the important concepts constantly. Make flowcharts, make your own short notes, whatever works best for you, but keep revising the notes constantly, okay? And the last chapter, which is reproductive health. Be very, very clear about all the contraceptive methods and assisted reproductive technologies, okay? so. As a 12th standard biology student, I'm sure you would have figured out already what works for you, right? Because there are a lot of names, there are a lot of terms that you need to remember and different methods of memorization work for different people. Maybe mnemonics or flowcharts or creating a song, a poem, whatever works best for you, make sure you remember everything, okay? Then, in addition to all this, I would also like to give you certain general pointers, okay? Um, so firstly, make sure you schedule your revisions. Now that you're just a couple of weeks away from your board exam, make sure you schedule your revisions as per what suits you best. 
you don't it's it's a very very bad idea to copy what somebody else has planned for themselves okay you know what time suits you best what chapters you know best what chapters you are weak at so based on all this create a proper schedule for yourself and stick to that okay secondly practice drawing diagrams because i'm talking from experience we might think that just by looking at a diagram in your textbook for a few minutes oh yeah this is already imprinted in my brain i can easily reproduce this on my paper but no that never works trust me it never works the only way is to practice drawing it a few times okay uh, thirdly uh, it's a good idea to make summary flow charts and diagrams and paste them around in your room or wherever uh, in a place that you're likely to look at many times during the day okay uh, so that even if you're not actually trying to study that at that point of time uh, it would subconsciously get imprinted in your brain okay try this out it actually works wonders then next thing a very very important thing get a lot of good rest and sleep your brain needs a lot of this for refreshment make sure you give your brain enough rest so that you can recall all that you've studied during your exam practice deep breathing this is really really important and useful because it brings a lot of focus to your brain okay even if it's during your exam before it whatever during your revisions any time it really helps then make sure on the day of your exam you don't skip breakfast because many students tend to do this uh, and i also used to be one among them but anyway from experience that i've learned that it's a very very bad idea make sure you have some really protein rich breakfast so that your brain gets enough nutrients to recall all that you've studied okay uh, and one more very very important thing that i've left out but you need to really make note of this make sure before you go to the final exam you have practiced at least the last 3 years papers okay because this is very very useful not just by keeping the paper in front of you and looking at your textbook and writing the answers but actually stick to the timeline okay keep your books away sit in a quiet place give yourself the feel of writing the exam so practice at least a minimum of the last 3 years papers plus the last the latest sample paper released by cbse all right then during your exam many students tend to get carried away by the flow of writing biology answers because it's a highly theory based subject right so you tend to write a lot of essays and long stories which is actually a very bad idea because no examiner wants to sit and read through the entire thing and search for the answers in your paragraph so make sure you keep your answers crisp and to the point okay make sure you include the key points because usually if it's a one mark question you would ideally have two key points and if it's a two mark question you would ideally have four key points of course there will be exceptions but generally this is the case so make sure you stick to all this all right so i guess we'll take up some of the questions that you have okay please explain the difference between progesterone and progestogen all right this is a question uh, from the last chapter reproductive health um, so basically progestogens just like estrogens and androgens are a class of steroid hormones okay a class of steroid hormones in your body uh, and progesterone on the other hand is a type of progestogen okay so don't get confused progestogen is a broader term progesterone is a type of progestogen okay next question um from varun is it better to revise previous years papers yes absolutely that's exactly what i told you uh, at the end it's a very very good idea actually your preparation i would call it incomplete if you haven't gone through any of the previous years papers so it is the best method of revision make sure you practice enough of them okay please tell me how to manage time during biology exam okay so this is a question from mr shiva kumar um well anyway thank you for asking that question because this is something that i actually wanted to tell you like i said biology is a subject where you tend to write long essays and stories and uh, you tend to lose precious time in which you could have actually completed the paper right so those of you who already have a plan about 
how to manage time well and good you don't have to pay attention to what i'm saying right now but the rest of you might find it very useful okay so how i look at it is like i told you we have five different sections right so if i were a student i would prefer starting writing the answers with section e okay so section e is where you have the long answer question okay so this is basically because when you start to write an exam you're pretty relaxed and you're not too bothered about the timelines or anything so you actually have enough time to think uh, about the key points and write well in detail all the long answers okay so i would suggest the three questions in section e try to finish it within about 35 minutes okay after this go on to section d in which you would have just one value based questions i don't think you would need more than 8 to 10 minutes uh, to write that answer then go on to section c which would include the short answer questions carrying three marks each right so you would have 12 such questions and um, if you can finish section c within about 80 minutes that would be great and then go on to section b which would have short answer questions of two marks which you can easily complete within about uh, 20 25 minutes and finally section a would be just the very short answer questions which you can definitely finish within 10 minutes so actually adding up all this uh, you get a total of 160 minutes so i have kept the 20 minutes extra for you to check and recheck or uh, to give yourself some buffer time so that just in case you got stuck at one question and you wanted to come back to it later you can use this extra time to finish that answer right so this is how i have planned out the time for you i hope this was useful okay so i guess that's all we have uh, related to reproduction we'll be discussing the coming chapters in our upcoming sessions so make sure you stay with us we will be discussing and taking up all your questions related to the respective chapters in the coming sessions i hope i was able to give you valuable inputs do stay tuned post any of your questions here we will get back to you good luck